Hey everyone, my name is Seth Smock and I'm the sales trainer here at ENS Security. And today we'll be doing a configuration of the C313 indoor monitor for Macuvox. In a previous video, we connected up the R29C door phone from Acuvox, and we're gonna be using that alongside the C313. So if you haven't watched that video, make sure to go watch that first before watching this video. It'll give you some entry steps to configuring the actual door phone. Now let's dive into the specs on the C313 indoor monitor. First thing mentioning is it is running on a Linux operating system. It is very clean, small footprint, very thin as well, so the installation is very easy. It is a seven inch touchscreen with energy saver mode as well. And it does support two way audio communication uh, with other units within the network as well. So comparing it to a R29 door phone, for example. And it is PoE powered, or you can also power it by an external source if you wanted to. And one very cool thing on the indoor monitor is it does actually have a relay out. Now we're not gonna be jumping into actually wiring that relay out, but if you need some help, we do have other videos such as our 29 video where we show that. And I also wanna mention here that people will also be able to live view camera feeds on this indoor monitor. That's one of the huge advantages of pairing it with a door phone. Another cool thing with this C313 is it does support smart home features and functions such as arming. If you pair it with like a door sensor or a window sensor, we're not gonna be jumping in that today, but it does have that capability. The last thing I wanna mention with using the indoor monitors from Acuvox is that this unit we're gonna talk about today is on a Linux operating system. Now, if you preferred an Android operating system, Acuvox does have options for that, where you can even sideload APK files to customize the indoor monitor a little more. We're not gonna jump into that today. We're gonna talk about the most popular one, which is the C313. So let's jump into my laptop and show some basic configuration. Now we're on my laptop here, and what you're gonna wanna do is make sure you have the Acuvox IP tool. If you do not have the Acuvox IP tool, make sure to go get that downloaded. There'll be a link down below to the Acuvox Knowledge website to get this downloaded. Once you have it downloaded and pulled up, as long as you're on the same exact network as the indoor monitor, you can go ahead and see that it will pull up for us, the C313. And what we're specifically looking for as of right now is the MAC address. We'll be taking a look at the IP address later, but for now, we're focused on the MAC address. Now you're going to want to log into the same exact cloud portal that you have for the intercom that you're using and log in here, R29C test office, go to info, you're going to go to public area and you'll see under public device, there'll be the intercom that you currently have and you're going to go to where it says new. Once you're under new, you're just going to go ahead and paste in the MAC address. You're going to go ahead and put in a location, for example, we'll say back office, which is where the indoor monitor is located. And we can go ahead and hit submit. You can also edit the device by selecting it and changing any settings with it. Now, the setting that I want to show you guys that I'm going to change real quick, just to give an example, is indoor monitor. And I can go ahead and hit submit. Now, you do want to choose indoor monitor on your first choice. I just want to show you that you do have the capabilities of editing this uh, device once it's in the cloud portal. Now give it a few minutes. I recommend waiting two, three minutes, going grabbing coffee, and you're going to wait for the status to go from gray to green. Now, as you see, the device of the indoor monitor has turned green where it says status, meaning the device is now connected to the network. Now we're gonna be needing the IP address of that indoor monitor. To get that, you're just gonna go ahead and pop open the IP tool again, go to the model number you're looking for and grab the IP address and go ahead and put that into a browser and search up that IP address. As long as you're on the same network, it'll connect. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and search the IP address now. And once you do that, you'll be on the screen to log into the device via the web interface. So the default passwords and username will always be admin admin. As soon as you log in, it will present you to set a new password. Uh, for now, I'm gonna go ahead and hit ignore, but I do recommend creating a new password. Once you're inside of the web portal, the first thing that I want you guys to do is go down to where it says upgrade, go to basic and view your firmware version. Okay, you may need to do an update on the device and upgrade the firmware. I suggest every single time that there is a device that you're adding on to be the first thing to do is to check the firmware version. And if it needs to be updated, 
go ahead and upgrade the firmware. Should always be the first steps just to ensure that you're on the newest firmware and that there's no issues that has already been resolved with an update. Now we're gonna be going and adding a contact and adding the R29C door phone as something we can call from the indoor monitor. So you're gonna to go to where it says contacts, go to local contacts, you're gonna scroll down and you're gonna go right here where it says contact settings. And this is where you're gonna fill out the information. So I'm gonna say front door. This is the R29C, so I'm gonna say front door R29. Nine, see, and then for the number, the number that you're going to be using here is the SIP number located in the cloud portal for the Acuvox R29. So back in here, you see the SIP number right here and the R29. I'm going to, go to copy this number. And I'm going to go ahead and paste this in here, and I'm going to go ahead and add it. Now, essentially what we just did here by adding that contact is creating a contact on the actual indoor monitor to call the intercom directly. If you're concerned that somebody's at the front door or you're monitoring a device, you can go ahead and check that out um, and call the front door and be able to communicate directly. There is other things in here such as phone, which if we go down here and we can view some of the other uh, settings such as display settings, multicast audio key slash display which can customize some of the displays under time and language you can customize the time format date format and other settings that you may want to change on the actual device you can go into the network basic and advanced settings and of course your account settings as well which is some more standard stuff now going back to phone real quick, you can scroll down to where it says relay. And if you're using a relay, this is where you can customize some settings on the relay here. And last thing I wanna show you guys is arming. Now arming is something we're not gonna cover in this video, but if you have some smart home features set up and this is what you're going for, there is some things that you can set up by doing some arming. If you have any kind of like door sensors and window sensors and such, um, you can get that set up on the arming section in the web interface. We're not covering that today, but it is an option for you. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is actually log into the R29C web interface by going into the IP tool, looking for the R29, and putting the IP address of the R29 into a web browser. Now, once you're in the R29 web portal that you've already set up or whatever intercom you're using, I do wanna show you guys how to set up on the R29 a speed dial function to call the indoor monitor directly if it's like a reception person or a back office. So what we're gonna do is go into where it says intercom, select key and display, And you're going to scroll down here where it says home page on the R29. Now, when you pull this up, it won't say speed dial here, but what you're going to do is click this button and you're going to look, for example, if it says contact, instead you're going to look for where it says speed dial. And you can name this on the R29. I already had it set as front office, but let's call it back office for this example. And right here is the SIP number of the indoor monitor that you want to call. So to get that number, we're going to go back to the cloud portal and I'm going to grab the SIP number of the indoor monitor and I'm going to go ahead and copy that. Go back to the R29 portal, paste that in there, and then I'm going to scroll to the bottom and hit submit. Now, basically now if I go ahead and call on the R29, there will be a button on the device that says back office. And when I click it, it's gonna directly call the indoor monitor. And then the person of the indoor monitor can then decide to let that person in or not. So now we're actually on the indoor monitor and the R29C locally. If we go into the indoor monitor and I select more and go into settings, 
go into, for example, let's say advanced settings, the default password is typically going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you hit okay. And you can access some of the more advanced settings inside of this indoor monitor, such as uh, password, network, SIP account, uh, and you can even reset the device from here as well. But what I wanna show you guys right now is going back here, you can see that I have on the call list, the front door, the R29C, so if I press this, so as you can see, I now have the indoor monitor set up and it's calling the device and they're able to communicate back and forth with one another. So if I go ahead and hit hang up, now, if you remember when we were in the configuration, we configured the six button on the R29C to say back office. And if I hit back office, it's actually just gonna go ahead and directly call the indoor monitor. And over here, you can go ahead and select answer. And you can view what's going on. You can also live monitor the device directly as well by selecting monitor. You can go into messages or you can even go down to the call list. For example, right here, it says Sesma cloud account. This is the cloud account for my phone and I can actually call that directly. Now to get this video wrapped up, this C313 indoor monitor is a great easy to use indoor monitor that you can pair with a variety of door phones and other types of systems. If you're using, for example, the E12W, which is a small video doorbell from Acuvox, it'll be great for small residential homes where you can have it in your kitchen or your living room. If you're using, for example, the R29, like we use today, that could be used for commercial use. If you're putting it in an office and an employee can go ahead and look at that footage from the front door directly at their desk rather than having to answer it from their phone or get up to go to the front door. Go ahead and make sure you like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel and check out our other social medias. And to get this picked up today, make sure you gave your ENS sales rep a call.